I'm Denise Surrett, and you're watching LadiesBehindTheBeat.tv. I recently had the opportunity to interview Leon Ndugu Chancellor. He is the drummer who played on the top-selling album of all time, Thriller. I'm sure you've heard the song Billie Jean. Well, he's the one playing the drums. Not only is he a composer, a producer, and the assistant adjunct professor at the USC Thornton School of Music, but he is also a three-time Grammy nominee. And here's what he had to say. Tell us about some of the great women that you've worked with in the music industry. I've worked with some great women. It started with Melba Liston, trombonist, and a trumpet player by the name of Clora Bryan. The next woman was a piano player by the name of Rose Gales. During my high school years, I had the pleasure of not only playing with on a consistent basis at school, but practicing extensively with my partner musically and my best friend, Miss Patrice Russian. Patrice and I have had a musical association since about 1968. And uh, we've practiced together, we've played together, we've been in different bands together, both under our own banner and for other people. We've played in blues bands, we've played in pop bands, rock bands, jazz bands, and also she's been one of the stellar females that I've worked with. And then in the mid 70s, I had the pleasure of working with Sheila E., Sheila Escovito. Mm -hmm. And Sheila and I shared the drum and percussion chair in the George Duke band. So those were the beginnings of me working with great females. Now in those days, we looked past gender and we just looked at the music. It wasn't about the gender because there were a number of ladies that were on the same level as the guys. So you didn't look at, well, it's a female, so don't expect them to hit hard or don't expect them to play this or play that. In my touring, I also met a percussionist that worked with Phyllis Hyman uh, by the name of Maida Casales, a Puerto Rican percussionist from New York. And during that same time that Sheila was playing with us, Maida was playing with uh, Phyllis Hyman, and she was equally as good. And then you enter a number of the newer females that came shortly thereafter for me, and that would be the Terry Lynn Carringtons, the Cindy Blackmans, uh, Rhonda Williams. I mean, there are a number of great females. Uh, people like Sheila E. were really kind of taboo. There were certain instruments they didn't readily want to encourage women to play. Drums was one, bass was one, guitar was one. Forgetting the fact that you had Memphis Minnie and uh, Rosetta Thorpe and people like that that played guitar and, and sang the blues and so forth. So it started to change as the rules started to change and women were more readily acceptable playing trumpet, saxophone, you know, they got out of just being the piano players, the singers, or the cello player. All of this music has a legacy that was not based on gender. It's just that in a male dominating society here in America, sometimes the gender was given a back seat. But the evolution, the creation, and the movement of this music is based on the music and not the gender. So whether you're encouraged openly or not, the music will live on, but the contributions will be equally as major, whether it's male, female, or otherwise. So I tell everyone, play the music. Hi. You're watching Ladies Behind the Beat.